remember some time ago, Brother Al teaching from uh, the book of Hebrews, and he said, at any time, if you get lost in the book of Hebrews, go back to chapter 8, verse 1, and you get your bearings. Because the Spirit said there, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest. And so that's like the, uh, the, the pole star of, of, the, of the letter uh, to the Hebrews. And obviously this text that Silas read for us uh, has uh, some details about high priesthood. Speaking in, he's speaking in general terms. Every, he says every high priest. The, the concept of priesthood is something of representation, is something that the Lord has spent some time in um, opening up and defining what it is. Not just anyone can represent anyone else. Not just anyone can be a priest. You can't just be a priest, and, uh, or the priest can't just be creative in his, in his representation uh, like an artist can. He says, well, this is how I see it, or this is how I do it. No, there's some, there's some very specific details, and, and if they aren't observed, well, the priest dies. That's how serious this, this matter is. And so the, the Jewish people, through the, the revelation of, of uh, Moses, uh, going all the way back into uh, Genesis, and the way the, the way the scriptures are written, the Lord is he's, he's setting the boundaries of what has, to, what has to take place for man to come to God. This is, this is not just like a freelance issue. It's not just uh, an open, open invitation uh, of uh, come see, come saw, of however, whenever, wherever, why ever. It doesn't work like that. Not with God. Uh-huh. I know there are, there, are, you know, there are institutions in the world that have an open door policy. Well, the Lord doesn't. And I know that, that it might sound kind of weird to some people, but Jesus, God needed Jesus before men could come to God. And so he's the, he's the lamb of, that's, a, that's a, a profound consideration. I remember one of the first times that, maybe not the first time that Brother Given ever said it, but the first time I remember hearing him say it, that God needed Jesus. I was like, why didn't I see that? Well, because I, I hadn't seen it yet. But when I saw it, how profound it, what Jesus did, the, the, the burden of what Jesus did was for God, not for Aaron. It spilled over to me, of course, but uh-huh. God needed a lamb. Yeah. God needed uh, atonement. Uh-huh. He, because he was the one that was, he was the offended party. That's we right. were the offenders. He was the offended. Yeah. And so Jesus, as a high priest, is a minister to God and to man. That, and that's the principle. That's the, that's the concept behind uh, being a, a high priest. So there's, there's quite a bit said to the Hebrews about uh, the trouble that they were having. You know, they were dull of hearing. Um, they, had, uh, they had become uh, forgetful. Uh, they were babes. They hadn't, they hadn't grown up. They weren't considering. They weren't, con- they weren't thinking about it. He said, let, it, let us consider the, our great high priest. They were neglecting. He says, if we neglect so great salvation. So there was, there was a lot of, of uh, problems and, and liabilities and... and uh, and things that, that the Holy Spirit was addressing to them and things that needed mending, things that needed um, salve, as it were. And uh, so how, how does the Holy Spirit uh, address uh, issues like this, problem, uh, problem areas? He expounds Jesus as high priest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's how, because if we don't, if, we, if we're hazy in our... Uh, our understanding, our perception of what it takes for a man to re- for God to receive a man to be accepted in God's presence, then things start to lose their significance. So, some of these uh, specific phrases uh, in this text: "taken from among men." He, so, the high priest is not. 
he, he, do, he really doesn't just live a life like everybody else. He's been taken from among men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's dedicated to God. Mm-hmm. And he's ordained for men. Mm-hmm. Well, the, 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 the whole uh, idea of ordination means that this person is not common. Mm-hmm. He's been ordained. That's right. yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And his ministry is things pertaining to God. In other words, you don't come to the high priest with your list of wants and wishes. He's a minister of things pertaining to God. And if your primary, if your, if your concern is not being accepted by God, then the high priest doesn't have anything for you. Because you don't bring your personal wants and wishes to the high priest. That, Jesus didn't come to do your will. He came to do God's will. And he came to offer sacrifices because we are debtors. Gifts and sacrifices. And so a summary, here's an uh, uh, early summary. The high priest is a representative from the race. He's a representative for the race, but he's primarily a minister to God. Mm-hmm. See, these are, some, these are some details. There are, there are some technical uh, details. And there are, there are technicalities in salvation. We don't want to be, I, I really don't appreciate uh, this representation of the gospel as just being simple, just so simple that it's really, it's really not. I've never read the book of Romans and thought that was just so simple. It, salvation is not a simple issue. It's complex. A, a, a race of beings that were created in the image of God uh, rebelled against God, and now God is going to recover them. But God can't sacrifice his own character in doing so. In other words, God's not going to change. God is, I, the Lord, change not. So he's got to change us. And all the while, there's an enemy that has a very real Mm -hmm. uh, claim to these fallen creatures because he's the one that brought them down. So it's not not a simple, Mm -hmm. simplistic issue. It's complex. In fact, it's a work that's so great that it is, it's worthy of God investing his own wisdom and his own grace into. Amen. Amen. And God, God isn't one to, um, this isn't in my notes, so I'm trying to coin it as I go. He, as men say, you know, you don't want to throw good money after bad money. Uh-huh. Well, the Lord doesn't throw good grace after bad, for a bad return. Mm-hmm. When the Lord invests, he, well, what happened to that vineyard in uh, Isaiah that didn't return? He destroyed it Amen. because the Lord doesn't work like that. And so then he's, what God is investing in Christ Jesus, the return on his investment is going to be worthy of, of himself. So I'm, um, I'm glad for that, um, that orientation to the book of Hebrews. Always just nail your thoughts back to Hebrews 8.1. And then you'll, you'll be able to, you're kind of like back on track. You'll be able to, to uh, move, or move about and, uh, uh-huh. and navigate around. I want to spend a little bit of time in highlighting through from almost every chapter in the book of Hebrews what a central theme this is of priesthood, mm-hmm. high priesthood. Mm-hmm. Chapter 1, verse 3, that he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's an illusion. It's not, um, he's alluding to. His high priesthood is why, is why I said it that way. Amen. It's not a direct, he sat down to intercede. That's why he's at the right hand of the majesty on high. Chapter 2, verse 17. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. So that's why he didn't become a man just to be an example. Mm-hmm. It's much bigger than that. He became a man so he could intercede. Uh, of course he was an example when he became a man, but it's much more than that. Right. So that he could be a high priest. Chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. You can't afford to ignore this. And that was the problem among the Hebrews. They were missing the significance of Jesus because they weren't considering him. They were neglecting. It was, He... Jesus was getting away from them because of their, uh, their uh, tendency back towards the form of, of the Levitical system. Right. And so they were, there's this constant comparison, and I love that through the book of Hebrews. There's this constant comparison of Jesus to angels, of Jesus to Moses, of Jesus to Joshua, Jesus to Melchizedek, Jesus to, 
there's a lot of comparisons. And there's, there's, some, uh, there's some very good things to, to see in that. Chapter 4, verse 15. <clears throat> Constant references to the high priesthood. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So the conclusion is, let us come boldly, because we have a high priest. Yeah. Chapter 5, verse 5, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but, thou, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. So the, this was not a, a uh, who wants to be a high priest? Yeah. It didn't work like that. That's, right. uh-huh. God, that's ordained. Uh-huh. Amen. He, is, he was taken, <laughs> ordained, because, God, th- because this is God's work. God took to himself the, and placed the, the high priest, our representative, uh, in, his own, uh, in his own presence. Chapter 6 and verse 20. Whether the forerunner for us is entered, even Jesus, made, after the, made an high priest after the order of Melchizedek. There's another interesting technicality. Melchizedek was not of the Aaronic line. Uh, chapter 7 and verse 24. This is the sum. Remember that. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. They were constantly taking another high priest, yeah. ordaining another high priest, because one would die. Mm-hmm. They were prevented from continuing by reason of death. Yeah. So eight verse one. Now the sum of which we have spoken, this is, or of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the majesty of the throne of the majesty. Uh, in the heavens, chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are, a, or are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Amen. So there's something very essential, something very uh, foundational to understand, is that the, the gospel is that we have a representative. We are accepted on the basis of our representative, on the, on the foundation of his work, not ours. In fact, his work is taking away our works. Yeah. Amen. Largely. Chapter 10, verse 12. But of this man, after he, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right, right hand of God. And uh, chapter 12, verse 24, just, just one more. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than, than that of Abel. So there's a consistent uh, thread yeah. of truth throughout this letter of, of high priesthood. Now there's some, some things to, um, to note here. After reading all of those, there is a regular likeness that he draws from Jesus to these, these other comparisons. Like there's a likeness made between Jesus and the angels. Angels are servants of God. Jesus is a servant of God. Angels are from heaven. Jesus is from heaven. But then he contrasts. Jesus is not just another angel. He draws a likeness. He draws a contrast. Okay? Jesus and Moses. Moses was appointed by God. Jesus was appointed by God. Mo- God sent Moses To the people, God sent Jesus to the people. But Jesus is not just another Moses. He draws a a likeness so that we know Jesus is the fulfillment of all of these shadows. He draws a contrast so we know Jesus is not just another shadow. So the likeness, it's necessary to have the likeness and it's necessary to have the contrast. You've got to, there's got to be some sort of foundation laid so that we know when God does the real work that he's been leading up to, that we know it's the real work because of what's gone before. But then we have to know also, this is the real work. It's not, it's not more type. Uh It's not more shadow. It's not more introduction as we might say, Jesus is the real deal. He's not, ju- he's not more preparation. He is the work. He is the purpose. And that's why I love that consistency through the book of Hebrews. That it's, just, it's, such, a, it's such a profound um, consideration. So the, um, here's, so, here's some of the contrasts that I have uh, just mentioned. He is a man as the other high priests. 
there were uh, names and genealogies and families, you know, that you could put together with, the, uh, with Aaron and the following uh, high priests. So obviously a, a priest is not a, a priest, high priest is a man. God had established this, is that we're, uh, there, there's no uh, mechanical representation. It has to be human. There's no angelic representation. It has to be human. It has to be a man. And so Jesus was a man, but he's a man from heaven. He's not just another, another man. Um, he ministers as a priest. He ministers in the tabernacle. The ministry of the priest wasn't, uh, it wasn't random. It wasn't uh, just up to the uh, convenience of the circumstance. And obviously it wasn't very convenient. They were traveling. They were uh, wandering in the wilderness. And they built this elaborate structure that, that was designed to be mobile. So it could be taken down and set up and taken down and set up. And so it wasn't just, uh, well, it, it would sure be a lot easier to conduct the uh, ministry of the priesthood like this. There weren't any options like that. So it was, it was clearly established that the high priest had to be a man, and it was clearly established that the ministry of that high priest was going to be in the tabernacle, that God revealed the pattern to Moses and built to exact specifications. And so the high priesthood didn't, or the high priest couldn't say, well, it's, it's really hot today. I think I'll just perform the duties of the high priest in the tent. That way we don't have to bother all the Levites with setting up this elaborate. didn't happen that way. It was in the tabernacle. Well, Jesus ministers in a tabernacle too, but it's the true tabernacle, not made with hands. See, you, so there's a likeness, but then there's a contrast at the, at the same time. Jesus is a high priest, but he's not from the tribe, but he's from the tribe of Judah not from the tribe of Aaron, and the Holy Spirit says nothing is said about high priesthood with regards to the tribe of Judah. So he's a high priest, but he's not the same. He, I guess from one perspective, it could say that you could say he breaks the type, but no, he's the fulfillment of the type. The type by, uh, just by nature of it being a type, it can't hold the fullness it's like, a, like a, an architect's rendering of a building on a flat piece of paper. You can't, you can't walk through the building and experience the structure just because the architect has given you his rendering right. on paper. It's a type, but it doesn't contain the fullness. And so Jesus is a high priest. He is a man. He ministers in the tabernacle, but it's so much more than what we see in... Uh, in Aaron and in Moses and in the, in the old, old times. So he was taken, a high priest is taken, he is ordained, and he ministers in things pertaining to God. And so the Lord has, has uh, gone to some extent in, in establishing these principles of, of representation and of, and of, of a high priest. The high, the high priest is not going to be... Uh, uh, oh, I'd like to be a high priest, but uh, I just want to do it for like six months because I have this career, you know, that I'm going to pursue. It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen that way. That's right. You had to be of the right bloodline. Mm -hmm. You were either, you could, you had to be born into it or you, or you weren't. Mm -hmm. And so it had to be the right person. And Jesus was born of the right bloodline. Taken from among men. <clears throat> he was taken. Here, there's two, two things to be seen in this. Maybe three. He's taken from among men. If I... That, it's not volunteer. He's taken from among men. So he's selected or he's chosen. He's taken from among men. It's not that he's unwilling... But it wasn't his will that made him the high priest. He's taken from among men. And he's taken from, so he's separated. So now he's not, he, he's not, he's not living a common, uh, common life of pursuit and um, of, of experience like other men. Because he's been taken from among men. 
Now, just think about how, how the Lord has used... I love the consistency of Scripture. Um, this is one of the, the early uh, lessons that I learned as I began to, uh, to teach and, and preach as the Lord uh, gave me opportunity is that Scripture expounds Scripture. You can't take Scripture, one phrase of Scripture, and, and go to the world to find out. That's like going down to Egypt for help. So as you... You look into this phrase of Scripture, taken from among men. Where do you go to find the significance of that? You go to Scripture Amen. to find the significance of that phrase. Now, so consider other places that the Lord has, has used this phrase. Uh, the, she was called woman because she was taken from man. Right. Taken from. So this was, it was the Lord's decision. He made Adam from the dust. I guess, you know, this is God. He could have made woman from the dust. But he took from man to make woman. And so now, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So Eve now has a, she, she has a significance to Adam that she wouldn't have if she was made from dust. She was taken out of man. So there would have been some uh, significance that Adam would have concluded. I'm made from dust. She's made from dust. But it's a, it's, it's a, a very personal uh, significance that has had some impact on Adam because he was take, she was taken from Adam. So taken from. Um, Numbers uh, chapter 3, verse 12, the Lord says, I behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel. That's exactly what, the, what our text is referring to. The Lord says, I have taken the Levites from among now the Levites don't have an inheritance like the other tribes. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't in the in the land of promise. They wouldn't have a, a lot of land uh, staked out for them mm -hmm. as their inheritance because the Lord is their inheritance because they were taken from out from the children yeah. of so they were distinct among all of the tribes. Uh -huh. They were dedicated to to the Lord. Taken uh, from some of the parables that Jesus told. It says. Uh, two men shall be working. Working, one shall be taken. Yeah. So now he's not where the other one was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's taken and the other uh, left. After the resurrection, the uh, uh, second miraculous catch of fish, Peter was astonished at the draught of fish that was taken. Well, they were trying to take all night, and they didn't get any taking. And then the Lord gave the word, and they took. Right. And so the, the fish were taken from the sea. So there's the separation again. Now the fish are in the boat, not in the sea. That's right. But it required, they were taken when the Lord gave word. Yeah. It wasn't just that the, it's not of man that wills or man that runs or of men that fish. Yeah. But when the Lord gave the word, uh -huh. then they took. Yeah. You yeah. see how all these things work together? Uh -huh. And the, the scripture opens up. The scripture, taken from among men. And so the days will come when the, the bridegroom shall be taken from them. Yes. Be separated. Mm -hmm. And it was at the, at the Lord's will, at the Lord's discretion, he was taken from them. And so the, the high priest, every high priest, every high priest, yeah. there wouldn't be, um, it, it wouldn't be uh, a, uh, the decision of the, of the board of directors. What? Uh, how, how are we going? We need another high priest. We have to take some counsel together as to how, how to uh, initiate another high priest. Now, every high priest taken, ordained, offered gifts and sacrifices, representative, is the same. That's right. Had to be consistent. If the shadow is inconsistent, then we really don't know who Jesus is. That's right. yes. The shadow had to be consistent. And so uh, he had to be taken from among men. And he had to be ordained ordained for men in things pertaining uh, to God. The, um, the morning and evening sacrifice of the lamb, a la lamb had to be offered every morning, a lamb had to be offered every, every evening. It was with, with fine flour, and there were some other details um, uh, there given in the, in the old scriptures, and it was ordained that way. So it couldn't be deviated from because this is, this is ordained this way. In other words... This is not, th this can't be left up to interpretation or to, uh, 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 to lightness or to preference. This is ordained. This, this is going to be this way. 
Hezekiah commanded that the trumpets and instruments uh, that David ordained be, be used in the, in the temple. Mm -hmm. David ordained it. Right. So Hezekiah, kept, it was ordained. Mm -hmm. See, there's a, there's, a, there's a holy reverence that is born out of an ordination. That's right. When something, even, even in our day, I remember when uh, Brother Ricky and Sister Tasha moved to Florida and we ordained Brother Ricky. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just a, just a formality. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like a, like a, a favor. It was, he has a, it has a certificate. I mean, this is what we do today, but this is, God's ordination is where we, we get that practice, mm -hmm. is that Brother Ricky has, his ordination is a recommendation mm -hmm. yes. from us mm -hmm. to the other people that he's ministering to. That's right. He's been ordained. The, uh, the two days of Purim that came uh, from uh, the days of Esther and Mordecai, the two days of fasting and praying, they were delivered. It was, it was then later ordained that these two days be observed by the Jews perpetually. It was ordained. It was decided. So now these days, these two days aren't just another day. There were many high days throughout the Jewish calendar. The Day of Atonement wasn't like just any other day. The two days of Purim, they were ordained days. Every, they, so they remembered the the, the curse that was leveled against them and the deliverance that they were, that they were given by God. Mm -hmm. It was ordained. The heavens, <clears throat> the works of his fingers, the sun, moon, and stars, God ordained them. Yeah, that's right. They're not random. Mm -hmm. They're ordained. In fact, they're so, they're so uh, precise and specific that, you can, that people can navigate by the bo oh, bodies right. in the heavens right. because they were ordained. Uh -huh. See, so ordained has to do with God's decision, God deciding. In fact, he, he ordained Jeremiah as a prophet. He wasn't a volunteer. From the womb, he ordained Jeremiah. God ordained Jesus to be judge. The hidden wisdom that, that Paul spoke, he said to the Corinthians, that hidden wisdom was ordained by God to to our glory. It was ordained. It was decided. So the high priest has more to do with God than it does with us. He's ordained. He's ordained. I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to come across as being, uh, of being simple or naive, but he primarily, he's a minister to God. He's ordained by God. He was taken by God. He ministers in things pertaining to God. And here's the, here's how it plays out. As this high priest ministers to God, mm -hmm. then he's ministering to us because we're blessed by the God who he's ministering to. Yes, that's, right. that's how it works. That's high priesthood. Amen. Ordained. So the, the high priest would be totally ineffective if he wasn't taken, mm -hmm. if he wasn't ordained. He's ministering things pertaining to God. He's not a personal assistant. He's not a, a, not a life coach. To refer to a, a, a contemporary uh, office, God takes men for his work. Yeah. Moses was his servant. David was his servant. God ordains men for his purpose. Amen. God's the one working in the midst of the earth. Amen. He's the one working salvation in the midst of the earth. So he does the taking. He does the ordaining. Jeremiah's message was things pertaining to God. It affected the people he was preaching to, but it was a message pertaining, things pertaining to God. Moses' ministry was things pertaining to God. Nehemiah's work was things pertaining to God. The wall was not just for beauty. It was the wall around the city of God. So it was things pertaining to God. Nehemiah, it wasn't just like a, a, a personal desire of his to see his hometown rebuilt. Nehemiah, had, he had this uh, zeal and this vigor for the city of God to be rebuilt. It was things pertaining to God. It wasn't a personal endeavor. Things pertaining to God. Everything in the tabernacle were things pertaining to God. This was, this was not like a museum of the cultures of the world. It's everything in the, temp, in the temple and the tabernacle. Everything had some significance to God. The light, the incense... The bread, the, the labor, the altar, everything, the gold, everything had to do with God, things pertaining to God. 
So this is, this is why, here's the connection between all of these types and shadows to, there are always, people always want a personal application, don't they? How does, this, how does this apply to me? Well, you must deny yourself. Because the gospel is made up of things pertaining to God. That's, that's one thing that the law and the tabernacle taught us, is that this, God's work has to do with God. Not my personal interest. So now when Jesus, he shows up and he says, a man must deny himself. Well, that's really not strange. That's really not a new thing, is it? The Levites denied themselves. Aaron denied himself. That's not a new thing. This is the way God was, had been opening this up all along. This is why, love not the things of the world. Why? Because they are not of God. They're of the world. See how that ties together? Jesus cleared the temple of things that did not pertain to God. That's why he cleared it out. Jesus wasn't against money. In fact, he said, well, whose, whose image is it? Well, give it to him then. He wasn't against commerce. He said, go buy the things. Jesus wasn't against money and purchasing and, and transaction. He was against it when it was in the temple because it didn't pertain to God. It gave the wrong it gave the wrong type. It gave people the wrong idea that you could uh, you could just stop by the temple and and everything. All the work's done for you. You didn't have to bring your lamb. You didn't have to bring the right money. You didn't have to make any preparations. You could just on your way to the market. You could just stop in at the temple and and fulfill your duties and be relieved of that burden and go on to other things. And so when it was when it didn't pertain to God, Jesus hated it. Amen. So he cleared it out. In fact, he said. Uh, he wouldn't. He suffered no man to carry wares through. Why? Maybe it was a shortcut. Maybe it would have been a much longer walk for them to to go from the market, you know, to wherever they were going. Well, then go another way. It didn't pertain to God, and so he sent them. He sent them another way. Here's another detail concerning the uh, the priest. Who he can have compassion on the ignorant. Okay, this is not like a niche market. I know that there are, <laughs> it's not that we, we need a high priest for these ignorant people, and, but the rest of the people are, they'll be okay on their own. This, compa- this reference, this compassion on the ignorant, it is a reference to you, Amen. and it is a reference to me. Yeah. It's not just a few people that they need a little extra help, you know, than the than the rest of them. In fact, this reference to ignorance is not derogatory. Uh He's not saying that stupid people need representation. They need need a little bit of help. In fact, ignorance does not mean stupid. Uh It doesn't mean dumb. Uh Okay? Every one of us, no matter how much knowledge and experience and understanding you have, you still have ignorance. In fact... That's one of the signs of experience is that you learn that you don't know everything. I work with a guy who I've learned a lot from. He says, the best thing I've ever learned is that I don't know much. And that guy, he can, he can figure anything out. It's just a, this is so ignorant. He had compassion on the ignorant is not, it's not like putting some, you know, the high priest has everybody under their thumb because he knows what's going on and nobody else does. He is ministering things to God because there is so much, so much required for man to be accepted by God that we just don't know it all. He can have compassion on the ignorant. And there were also, on a very, uh, very specific uh, reference here, there were offerings for sins of ignorance. You could sin and not know it. But let's make... Here's a, uh, a personal application of that. Have you not, in your growing in the faith, have you not re- learned that there was sin in you that previously wasn't bothering you, and then, and then all of a sudden it starts bothering you? Mm-hmm. Jesus can have compassion on the ignorant. Yeah. Amen. You see how this applies? That's right. Amen. It's not just, this is not a, this is not a, a license to be ignorant. Well, I have a high priest because I'm ignorant. This is, this is not, this is not how, why, this is not the approach or the conclusion that the Holy Spirit is leading us to, is that we see in a glass darkly. Jesus, let's put it this way. Jesus is doing more 
as our high priest than what we presently know. Amen. It takes more for us to be accepted in the beloved than we presently know. Yeah. And Jesus has compassion on, on the ignorant. Mm -hmm. I, I love this. <clears throat> So in, to Jesus, infirmity is not unfamiliar. He, he, he has compassion on, on the ignorant. Here's some examples of, of this. Romans 8.26 says, We do not know how we should pray, what we should pray for as we ought. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.26, that the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And those are groanings that he uses, by the way, that... That text is used in all, all different kinds of ways. But he's interceding for us when we know not what we should pray for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, there's a, there's a distinction here. It's not that I, I'm going through this trial, but I just don't know how to pray for it. Mm -hmm. This is, you're going through a trial, and you don't even know what you're up against. Yeah. Or it could be put this way. You think things are going pretty well right now. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what's going on. In the spiritual realms, you don't even, like Jesus said, I have many things to say unto you now, but you cannot bear them. Uh -huh. Jesus is still saying that today. There are things that it's, Jesus, Jesus says it to us when we can bear it. That's right. And so when you, Brother Ricky gave us a testimony this morning about something that he, Jesus showed him that he didn't, well, he, when he could bear it, he got it. And that's true of every one of us in our walk of faith. When we can bear it, then we get it. So we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Mm -hmm. It's not, I just can't find the words. Right. It's much deeper than that. It's that there's something you need that you don't even know you need it. Amen. And Jesus ministers it to you. Yeah. So if Jesus, if, if he was not ever living to make intercession for us, mm -hmm. then we would, we would just be, we would fall. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, we, we would be, we, we are no match for the wicked one. <clears throat> so Abraham, I thought about this in the, uh, in the class this morning, about Abraham and his, uh, the first, as, this, as the promise that God gave him, opened up and developed over the years. He didn't know that it was going to be from his own body and from Sarah. Yeah. He didn't have those details. And so he was ignorant. Doesn't mean he was unbelieving. Uh -huh. Doesn't mean that he was... Um, uh, just witless, that he just didn't, that God said something to him, he just didn't have any idea, didn't understand. It wasn't like that at all. Abraham had incredible intelligence, but he had incredible faith. So he was, he was ignorant of, how it was, of all the details, but that didn't stop him from believing. That's right. Out of the way. <clears throat> Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, because he also himself is compassed with Infirmity. Now, here's one of the, the high priests of the old days. They were compassed with infirmity while they owned infirmity while they were ministering. Jesus doesn't own infirmity while he's ministering, but he is touched with the feeling of our infirmity because he was made like unto his brethren. So he doesn't possess infirmity now, but he does possess the ability to remember infirmity so he can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. Now, here's uh, just one more point. Uh, before I'm done, is that the out of the way is not speaking about inherently rebellious people. That's right. Same as compassion on the ignorant is not talking about dumb people. Mm -hmm. He can, because remember, this is, uh, this is a likeness of Jesus ministering to his people. Mm -hmm. So on them that are out of, out of the way, uh, back at Mount Sinai, he started, he used the same phrase, these, the same uh, type of phrase, out of the way. They had gone out of the way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, that time at Mount Sinai, of course, it was rebellion. Mm -hmm. But I just want to, I, I want to make this connection with, they went out of the way <laughs> at Mount Sinai. In the judges, multiple times, he, the Lord would tell the judge, the people have gone out of the way. Mm -hmm. It means they, they weren't following in the in the ways of righteousness and the things that have been uh, revealed. In, uh, in Malachi, uh, the, same, uh, ac um, the same assessment was made of the people. They had gone out of, the, out of the way. In fact, Romans chapter 3, in a quotation of the Psalms, says they have all gone out of the way. That, that's characteristic of, of, the, 
uh, of the unrighteous. They've gone out of, of the way. But now th- bring this into, the, into Jesus' ministry and think about it this way. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Uh-huh. Walk ye in it. Uh-huh. Hebrews 12, 13, he says that um, strengthen the feeble, uh, thing, the, the feeble knees, the weak knees, that that which is lame may not be turned out of the way. Okay, so now the, the way in the gospel is, has more significance. It has more um, profundity yeah. than it did at Mount Sinai. That's right. This is the way. Mm-hmm. Walk ye in it. That it be not turned out of the way. So here's, here's the, the uh, application. Out of the way does not, is not only uh, applicable to hard-hearted and rebellious people. It might be to the ignorant same as he just said maybe you've gone out of the way not because you wanted to maybe you went out of the way because you were ignorant I could be out of the way because I hadn't understood yet but I didn't want to be out of the way he can and Jesus can have compassion because when we're ignorant and if we go out of the way, he can have compassion on us as a high priest. Think about Peter that night. He says, he says Lord, if I, have, if I had to die with you, I, won't, I will never deny you. We could, he could have said, I'll never go out of the way. But that night, he did go out of the way, didn't he? But he really, you got to see the heart of Peter. He really didn't want to. He was pained by it. He wept over it, but he did go out of the way. Uh-huh. Gee, but Peter had a high priest, mm-hmm. and he had compassion. Yes. Think about this. This is my, la- my last application here. Saul of Tarsus was out of the way. When he was a persecutor, he was apparently and obviously out of the way. But what did Saul, how did Saul of Tarsus uh, assess his, his activity? He was serving God, wasn't he? Yeah. This was, this was not in accordance with Moses. This was not in accordance with the law. And he was, he was taking care of it mm-hmm. because they were taking the name of God in, onto outside of the revealed form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, But it was actually Saul that was out of the way, and they were in the way, except Saul didn't know it. He was ignorant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then on the road to Damascus, his ignorance was resolved, and he was not out of the way again. Amen. So I... I, I love how the Holy Spirit has represented our condition mm-hmm. and how he's represented our provision. Mm-hmm. Is that he's taken from among men, he's ordained, he ministers the things pertaining to God, offer gifts and sacrifices. It's just, it reminds me of what Brother Fred so often said, is that these, these things are so perfectly adapted to our situation. Yeah, we needed a high priest, and that's what Jesus yeah. is for us. Amen.